Hello lovely people, my name is Emma and today I'm doing a video about my all-time favourite fiction books. So this was requested on my channel from a couple of weeks ago, it's taken me a little while to get around to doing it and don't worry there will be the non-fiction top 10 coming out at some point over the next week or so too. Um, so yeah, so I have 10 books that are my all-time favourites as of this moment and they are in no particular order because it was hard enough trying to get just 10 that I wanted to talk about that I can't even begin to attempt to rank them within that top 10 itself. This was really interesting to try and sort out because there's a bunch of books of what I would call like almost my legacy favourites and these are ones that have been favourites for me for absolute years and I have reread quite a few times and then since sort of March 2018 I really started to focus back on reading and since then have obviously discovered several books which are now new favourites however I've not had the opportunity to reread them and see what that experience is like so I almost have in my head kind of two subsections of my favourites which are like my all-time favourites that I've reread tons and I know I definitely definitely love and my like newer all-time favourites that I kind of need to let sit a little bit longer but I'm pretty sure all-time favourites so <laughs> yeah I hope that makes sense um, but let's just jump in and talk about some books, shall we? The first one I'm going to talk about is The Golem and the Genie by Helen Wecker. This is a historical fiction magical realism which is set in New York in like I think the 1920s? Was it the 20s? Uh, sorry, 1899. Get it right Emma. Whoa bad start um, and it follows two mythical creatures so we have a golem which is a creature made of stone that is supposed to be like a slave to their master but their master dies very early on so they become free and then we have a genie which is um a, like a, a kind of standard wish granting genie as such um but from a um, slightly different culture and um, I think he's kind of fire based and it's them coming to New York and then experiencing trying to hide their status from other people and it is about their relationship and then coming together and sort of finding out about each other. It's really lovely and whimsical and magical and the differences of their characters was really really interesting and I just absolutely devoured this book. I thought it was so beautiful and the descriptions of uh, historical New York were also really really lovely. In theory it's the first of a series although the second book publication date keeps being pushed back and pushed back and pushed back but you could treat it as a bit of a standalone um really wonderful book the next one i've talked about a fair amount on this channel before it's one of my legacy books and that is the gargoyle by andrew davison so this is a magical realism -y kind of book again what it is is about a gentleman who is frankly a terrible human being who gets involved in a very horrific car accident and gets very very badly burned right at the beginning book like opening scene and then the rest of the book is his um, experiences trying to heal and recover but also his interactions with a young woman who um, potentially has some kind of undiagnosed schizophrenia kind of discussions there but she believes that they are long lost lovers who um, have had in past lives were together and it's about their journey and their story. Um, it's absolutely whimsical and magical and just so so beautifully written. It does some fun stuff with some of the kind of font as well and it's kind of playing around with interesting formatting and I really enjoy both the kind of medical descriptions of his burns and the treatments but also the different dipping into other stories and other cultures that happens within this book. It's a really wonderful book and has just a beautiful beautiful ending. It's a little bit mm, when dreams may come kind of a, a vibe to that one. An absolute all-time favourite from my childhood is the His Dark Materials trilogy. Uh, you can say that I'm cheating to have entire trilogies on this list, but this is the first of three entire trilogies. Get over it, I'm including all of them. Um, so <laughs> this is fairly well known. It is The Northern Lights, Subtle Knife and Amber Spyglass, and it tells the story of Lyra who lives in a parallel universe, London, um, Oxford, where she has a demon which is like part of her soul and the whole world in that you, human beings have demons which are parts of their souls that take on animal forms. It's got all sorts of funky uh, conversations with religion, Lyra goes on a journey to the north to find the children that have been missing, the second book takes on with Will who is from our world and has something very cool going on with a knife, it's all very exciting, I don't want to say too much, you probably know about it already, it's very very popular, many adaptations, whole new trilogy that we're not even going to talk about that's coming out at the moment, but I just adore 
this series so much. I, I could not even begin to guess how many times I've reread this. This is an absolute legacy book from my childhood and I stand by it. I reread it relatively recently, like two years ago now, and still absolutely adored it. Like, it can do no wrong in my eyes. Another legacy book for you here, I did say there were quite a few, and that's Seasons of the Witch by Natasha Mostert. This is a thriller, a bit of a gothic thriller, but with elements of magic thrown in and kind of psychic powers. Uh, it tells the story of a gentleman who, um, he's normally like an information thief, he does a lot with technology, but he also has some kind of psychic abilities that he's been, um, has worked with the government with in the past. He gets hired by a long lost friend who they parted in quite bad ways to try and find her stepson who she thinks has gone missing or potentially is murdered by these two mysterious women who are sisters. He gets involved with the sisters to try and get closer to them to find out more as a PI but there's something going on there very nefarious and they're drawing him closer and closer into their web. It's gorgeous, has so much information about um, memory, memory palaces, all sorts of really fun, cool, quirky stuff and just yeah really atmospheric, very very spooky, absolutely delightful. There's a lot of very atmospheric books on this list, if a book makes it to be a favourite it tends to be due to its setting and its real kind of immersiveness which is what I really look for in a book. Going off on a slightly different track now, we have the 13 and a Half Lives of Captain Blue Bear, a novel by Walter Powers. Uh, I don't think anyone's surprised to see this on this list. This, again, this is another throwback to my childhood, but I've reread it many times as an adult and it totally stands up. I read book two quite recently. It's fantastic. We love Walter Powers. So, this is his Zamonia series. This is book one, but they are kind of standalones. Think Terry Pratchett, same world, different characters kind of vibe. And it's just, it's crazy. It's that absurdist fantasy, zany humour. Um, it features Atlantis. It's mental. Basically, Captain Blue Bear. Blue Bear, as we see here, is telling us the story of his 13 and a half lives. So each one is almost like its own mini novella of his experiences as he goes through. It starts off with him as a young boy who has no idea where he's come from and he ends up on the island of Hobglob Hobgoblins where they eat tears. So he cries from them every night to stop them from devouring his soul. It moves on from there. We get talking waves, like I said, we get the city of Atlantis. At one point he goes to university from a creature who has seven brains. He falls through a uh, like wormhole and ends up in a crazy dimension where they ride around on carpets and are made of jelly. It's completely insane. He runs away from a giant spider at one point. It's it's just fantastic. I love Walter Mowers. I think he does such cool stuff. But what I really appreciate about his absolute crazy zany books is they do genuinely bring themselves full circle and there is an overarching plot that really does make sense and is fantastic at the end. So if you're looking at this being like, why would I want to attempt all that? That sounds mental. Why bother? It does pull itself all together and I think he does some amazing work in them. Really, really cool. They live in a tornado at one point. That might be one of my favourite bits of it, actually. A classic that's on this list is Joseph Heller's Catch-22. This is a modern classic and it is discussing Yossarian, who is a pilot in the Second World War, and it is, again, an absurdist humour of a very different style to Captain Blue Bear. Um, the idea is that it's kind of, it keeps looping back on itself and it, it's filled with all sorts of crazy scenes that end up becoming very self-referential. It's a very difficult book to talk about but Catch-22 is where the infamous Catch-22 comes from and the point of Catch-22 in this book is you would be insane to have to be a pilot in the war because of their um, like t survival rates. But uh, so you could then be grounded because you were insane. But if you were sane enough to realise this, then you're sane enough to go back up in the air. So it becomes a, a kind of cyclical looping thing. It's really, really entertaining. And I definitely want to reread it again because it just is bizarrely funny and dark and gritty and amazing in equal measure. It reminds me a lot of MASH, the TV show. Fantastic. Okay, coming up to one that again, no surprise at all to see this on this list. It is Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mandel. This, I don't know if I even really need to talk about it. So many people have heard about it not just from me but also from obviously like the whole of booktube very much a booktube darling uh, book world darling shall we say this is post-apocalyptic fiction set taking place in a world after a flu has wiped out 99.9% .9 of the population maybe not one to read right now if you're feeling a bit fragile um, but it is following both the timeline of what is happening around the time of the epidemic but also 20 years on and the characters and what our world has become there is an overarching plot and all the characters do interlink in some kind of way but it is very much more kind of vignettes of this new life and also how we got to this point um, the main kind of story focuses on um, a young woman who travels around with um, like a collection of traveling caravans who put on Shakespeare plays in the little isolated pockets of communities um, that are scattered across America. It's beautiful, it's stunning, it 
warms my heart it's about human endurance and what is important in life and i absolutely adore it so all-time favorite book by far i've got a couple where i don't actually physically own them yet uh, one of them is heart shaped box by joe hill this is another legacy book and is the only horror on this list i love joe hill and this is his very first book and it is about uh, an aging rock star called jude who likes to collect all sorts of spooky weird paraphernalia so he decides out on a whim to buy um a, a ghost off of ebay attached to this dead man's suit the dead man's suit gets delivered but the ghost actually comes and it looks like it has some kind of kind of connection to one of his old girlfriends who died in mysterious circumstances as the ghost starts to haunt jude and his current girlfriend georgia they race across america to try and get back to jude's uh, hometown to try and um do something to get rid of this ghost it's so spooky and atmospheric and i love the characters and i love what joe hill can do with them it's very like tight as a story it's very fast fast paced really really close knit the plot really works fantastically and it's just like a roller coaster ride from start to finish i think joe hill is so good at keeping everything in that kind of real tight frame it's something he's got worse at as he's gone on some of his books become a little bit more meandery and the plots aren't quite as tight but in terms of as a debut full novel i think it is pretty much flawless and i absolutely adore it like i said there were two more trilogies on this list and one of those is the themis files by sylvain nouveau uh this is uh sleeping gods or sleeping giants only humans waking gods something like that this is a sci-fi but it's a sci-fi set on our planet for the most part and it tells the story of a young girl who finds a giant robotic hand buried underneath the earth when she's a child when she's quite young and then when she's older as a scientist she gets an opportunity to study this hand and finds out that it might be linked to more components scattered across the world and maybe it's a giant robot left behind by aliens it sounds a bit zany and quirky and crazy but it actually is really embedded in a strong sense of realism and reality because it's looking at things like um, the science behind how we would try and study this. The hand is found in a cave with some markings on the wall and it's the idea of trying to they bring in linguistic experts to try and decode it um the work that they do to try and discover more the way that the military interacts with kind of the different powers and governments across the world um the idea of ends justifying means and what can and can't we do and state secrets and things it's really fascinating um i really recommend it on audiobook because it's all told in uh, interviews and like government reports and the idea is it's more of a spoken word um, manuscript rather than actually like a, a a narrative story as such and i just think it's so cool and so powerful i personally really enjoyed the entire trilogy which is why it's on this list i know some people didn't particularly like some of the stuff that happened in book two and book three but i thought it made jumps in a way that made a lot of sense and i was very very on board with everything that they did with it and i thought it was really good fun the final one i'm going to talk about is the bear and the nightingale by Catherine arden or more accurately the winter night trilogy by Catherine arden so this is the bear and the nightingale the girl in the tower and the winter of the witch i finally finished the winter of the witch relatively recently so i can include this trilogy on this it has jumped its way to all-time favourites. It is a magical realism book set in medieval Russia, focused on Russian folklore and the interaction between Russian folklore and Christianity as a religion. We follow our main character, Vasya, who is the uh, daughter of a kind of uh, lord as such of a particular area in medieval Russia. And she's a bit of a wild child and the first book is focused on her dad trying to run his kingdom deal with Vasya and try and find her a husband and not really know what to do with her and her interactions with um the the kind of um the demons of russian folklore that she can see and the clashes with a new priest who comes to town there is also the winter knight king who is absolutely fantastic and his evil brother who have been locked in some kind of epic battle for pretty much the entirety of time it's so much fun so cool absolutely love it i just think vasya is an amazing character and her character growth across the whole trilogy is stunning um book two is probably my favorite don't know if i can say that there was some really tender moments in book three that i adored but some of the plot in book three was a little bit shaky um but still an absolutely amazing series would 110 10 percent recommend really need to do a reread of this some point soon so those are all the books that i would consider to be all-time fiction favorites at the moment this was such a hard list to pick i nearly extended it to my top 15 or top 20 but then i was like i i that's too long a video and I can't possibly do that. Um, so let me know what you think are any of your favourites on this list and I will have the non-fiction version of this out fairly soon, fingers crossed. Have a wonderful reading week and I will chat to you soon. Bye.